Hello, puppies and kittens. We're uh, once again we're doing another uh, raw man episode. I think this is one seventeen now, and you know the, the goal of this show is I've, I've often said you know that you know anybody can complain and everybody does, uh, but I want to talk to the people that uh, that not only have a plan to make things better, but are actually working toward that end and trying to do something about it. And uh, the the person we're talking to today, I think, certainly fits that bill. All right, we were talking to a young author that started at was it eight? years old? Yes. Okay. So at eight years old, she got the brilliant idea that uh, science education was lax, I guess. And so there was, there needed to be more material to inspire a, you know, a, a Carl Sagan type inspiration into exploring sciences. So she wrote a children's book and we're going to be talking about that. It turned into a series and uh, we're going to be talking about that now. Is it, the name is Bailey Harris? Yes. All right. Well, pleased to meet you, Bailey. I understand that you, uh, you, you were a featured speaker at, at some of the uh, the science conventions recently, is that right? Yes, I was in CSICon, Freedom from Religion, and a lot of others, yes. Okay, wish I was important like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I've never actually been to SciCon. Yeah, so, you should definitely come. Uh, well, I, yeah, I'm envious that... that they had you up there. So uh, there was a, in, in the documentation that you sent me, there was a, they linked to a Kickstarter. Can we start with that? What is the Kickstarter about? So I'm making a new cover design and larger size for hardcover. Um, it has a forward by Richard Dawkins and uh, we're making a Spanish translation in paperback and ebook. Brilliant. All right. And so where, uh, where in the world are you or where are you from? I should say. Um, Utah. <laughs> okay, now that just opens up a whole other question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, can we, do I have to, to, to state the question? Of oh, yeah. I was born and raised in Utah, the Mormon capital of the world. Uh, one of the phrases that pretty much sums, sums up Utah is, gosh darn, I stepped in freaking dog shiz. <laughs> 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 yeah, I actually got censored. I, I got censored for saying this is what I actually said. Gosh darn it to heck. That's, I was, I, no, that's pretty perfect. <laughs> the guy wasn't paying attention. He just bleeped me and then criticized me for 10 minutes after that. I'm like, this is actually what I said. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yeah, one of the things that I saw in Salt Lake City was uh, there was a, a bumper sticker that said Joseph's Myth, and I thought, well, that's clever. <laughs> that works. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so what was it like um, growing up secular in Mormon land? Um, when I was in elementary school, I would say I lived in a more Mormon area compared to Salt Lake City, and it was like pretty much ninety five percent Mormon and. I got criticized a lot for living in a secular family because many kids at the time when I was eight were starting to now get baptized and people were like, oh my God, you're not, you're not Mormon. You're not, uh, you're not getting baptized like all of us. You're not as cool, you know? And then at this time I definitely had to go to counseling and other things to help me get through it. But yeah, that's how it was. Yeah, I, I was also, I spent a lot of my childhood in Utah and the whole Four Corners area, you know, Arizona and Nevada, uh, New Mexico, uh, Utah, Colorado. And there are places there that if you're not Mormon, you're not employed. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's strange. That, you know, people in other parts of the country have no idea what this is like. When they hear, the, when they, when they hear about Mormons, they just they talk about how what the, the, that crazy cult full of people. But there's parts of the country where you're the weirdo if you're not Mormon. Yes, definitely. <laughs> we moved to, to Los Angeles, and I remember suddenly, uh, you know, my, my Mormon family are suddenly the freaks, and I couldn't understand why that would be. Yeah, it's crazy. It's definitely a culture change when you just go to a different, like, state. Like, I'll go to California. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And we lived in a city called South Jordan, actually named after the Jordan River from the Bible. You know, so it was a, it was a very religious area. And, um, you know, this girl kept telling her she was going to go to hell over and over and over again. And she would come home crying. And, you know, I just remember um, laying with her where she'd cry, cry herself to sleep at, at night. And um, 
you know, we went to the to the principal because this girl kept following her around. The assistant principal um, told Bailey that she was being a bully because she wouldn't play with this girl that was telling her she wasn't going to go, that she was going to go to hell. And so two weeks after that, my wife went into the school and uh, saw Bailey sitting in the corner at lunchtime reading a book on bullying. And she went to the assistant principal and said, why is Bailey not playing with the other kids outside eight years old right um and then the lady said well she's not she's refusing to play with this other girl and we just can't have that that's bullying and um so kenzie talked to my wife talked to bailey and bailey said she just keeps telling me i'm going to go to hell and it's really you know makes me cry every day and so uh i she my wife called me i left work right then ran in, into the um assistant principal's office and she she just said, you know, I'm done talking about this. She's a bully, you know, get out of here. So we set up time with the, the next morning with the principal and told her, told him what was happening. And um, we don't know exactly what happened, but the assistant principal wasn't working there the next week. Um, but, it, you know, a really difficult time for, for Bailey. But yeah, a positive story comes out of yeah, this. But definitely. Ah, okay. So um, your original title, you, you did the Stardust series, and that was a, that was a brilliant name, but you, that wasn't the first title that you had on no uh, uh the first title was the book of truth because because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i was like the book of mormon the book of truth just yeah i don't know i just thought of that <laughs> yeah uh, it, it, it's funny you you can have you can seek truth or you know it, it, you're supposed to be um you're supposed to support those and, and, and embrace those who seek the truth, but doubt those who claim to have found it. Yes. And I, I, I've, I've had a number of times when I thought I had the truth, and then I found myself later on with a whole different truth until I had to figure out what a definition of truth was, that, that it's not just whatever you currently believe. There has to be something that you can actually demonstrate to be true. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. so now I, I live by the one that did. the truth is what the facts are. Yes. That's yeah. A good yeah. Science is a, is a verb, right? Like that's what um, Schirmer says. It's a, it's an action. That's what we do to, to try and find truth. Okay. So why is being an activist for atheism important to you? I feel like it is important to fight for atheism because religion fights so hard against science education and equality that I feel like it's uh, it's a very th good thing to just like fight for. Yeah, well, we, we do need a lot of secular activism. And, and one of the things that I, I'm a member of a number of atheist organizations on the board mm -hmm. of directors for a few. And one thing I can proudly say is that atheists are probably the best defenders of freedom of religion. But that also means that we have to have freedom from religion. And of course, believers don't understand that. They, they, I've actually heard people tell me that that freedom of religion means that you are free to worship Jesus any way you want, according to any Christian denomination you like, but that freedom of religion always only ever exclusively meant Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, unless you believe in um, Muhammad, right? Or yeah, And then it doesn't count. Because yeah. that's somehow that's foreign, and, and even though it's not written down anywhere, that's, I it, it's funny how Christian nationalists will uh, will interpret some things. So you you met Richard Dawkins when you were at SciCon, right? Yes, it was so fun. Uh, when I met him, I was not prepared at all. I was like, I was like, wait, is that Richard Dawkins? And I just looked over, and um, I'm so glad that I got to meet him. Actually, like it was actually so it was like one of my dreams to meet him so they were they were both speaking at SciCon last year in las vegas and um you know the two of them were standing up by the stage and somebody walked up to the two of them and said you know richard dawkins you're so amazing you changed my life you know god delusion and he was he turned to this person and pointed at bailey and said this is the person you should be excited for right now she has written three science books and she's only 13 years old at the time. <laughs> so, I mean, the, really nice, very, you know, very nice. Uh, so kind to Bailey ever since then. Yes. Very, so Super. supportive. So you started a, uh, I read that you started a chapter of the Secular Student Alliance. Yes, I did. It, it's very important during these times to have a safe place in schools uh, for kids that are secular, I feel 
because sometimes people feel like there's no there's no like other place they can go and I feel like it's always good to have a safe place for people like me who do want a community that's secular I feel yeah and it, it matters a lot in in the south especially that when you mention that you are secular, and I'm sure you, you probably get something similar in Utah, though I don't think it would be quite as bad as in, the, in some of the southern states, that when you identify as secular, the people don't see much distinction between that and satanic. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and so they, they, do, uh, they do tend to target kids who are, who are unbelievers. So your, uh, your video, uh, you took a secular tour of the Ark Encounter. Uh, and I didn't see that one. Uh, can you tell me about that video? Yeah, we uh, did a video <laughs> and it was actually really nerve wracking because um, we had to go into this like place where a bunch of religious people were and uh, had to talk about science. You know, I partnered with Secular Student Alliance and was at uh, the American sorry, I lost my train of thought, American Atheist Conference and asked if I would uh, like to meet with them at the Ark Encounter and tour a book reading there and of My Name is Stardust. And there Forget was... <laughs> don't, don't ever get a great Pyrenees. They, they cannot stop barking. <laughs> <laughs> I love dogs. Um, but uh, they were, we went in there and one of the stories is, I was in there and I was talking about like about how old the earth was and this woman heard me and she flipped out and went and told the security guard and was like this girl she's she's saying stuff that's not like true and the security guards come up to us because we're filming inside the ark and they were like uh what are you guys doing and uh luckily uh the person that was filming us was like uh made made like so this school project this this is a school project <laughs> and we luckily got away with it just imagine having security called on you <laughs> yeah that was so scary uh, for for yeah for, for for what and it doesn't even it's not even just that you can you can show you can actually prove that you're correct i mean even if it wasn't a situation where you could prove you're correct yeah. you have an opinion that differs from this other person's opinion and so they're going to call security on you for that yeah that's outrageous yeah, it was crazy <laughs> yeah well, well you're you're lucky because i've i know other people have gone into the ark encounter i went into the ark encounter and i managed to get a recording i had a guided tour and mm -hmm. i recorded my guided tour with the ark encounter staff but then shortly after that, they put that cancellation on, on doing video. So mm -hmm. other people wouldn't you know, pay the ridiculous amount, like 40 something dollars to get in there. And they're, they're trying to record their tour of the Ark Encounter and then they're getting the cameras taken away. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm surprised. And it's not consistent because it doesn't happen to everybody that goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to say anything more about that. Uh, so you said in the, in the video, that the the lady the lady did that and then let's see um let's see what was it what was the other thing? oh yeah what was the scariest thing that you saw in the ark uh the children's section definitely uh there was a fairy tar tale arc sign and interactive displays and i was just like it was scary <laughs> a fairy tale arc sign yeah, because uh, you would I was go surprised ahead. that they would admit that that was a fact. <laughs> I know. We were like, what? <laughs> Didn't make any sense, but it was kind of scary because you would walk into there and it, it was like a maze of the ark and there's like thunder. I'm like, how would a kid like to walk into this? But, you know, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how many, how many books have you done in this series of yours? I've done three. Done three. Yeah, yes. I think I have all three of them here in my library. Thank you. Oh yeah. yeah, thanks for having them. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm 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 very pleased with them, and so I want I want to see the series continue. Do you have a Do you have a limit on that? Do you have like a, a an, an outline of how many are going to be in the series? Do you have like blocked out which ones you want to cover and so forth? Um, I definitely have many ideas, but I think I'll definitely probably do more. But 
Well, I'm thinking about it, you know. <laughs> okay. So uh, give me a refresher. What are the three about for the audience? So uh, my first one is My Name is Stardust. And then uh, we're doing, of course, the new one with like the new cover, just the new cover. Then we have the one about solar system evolution and then the first one which is my name is stardust and it goes over a lot of th different things okay and how did you end up uh, getting dawkins to write a forward for you because I'm, I'm envious again because i couldn't get him to write a forward for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i think uh after we spoke at csi con in las vegas i reached out to him and i asked him if he would be willing to write the forward and he said that he would be delighted to write it and I'm so happy with his words in my book. So yeah, he was brilliant too. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, I would I would love, love to hear or, or know how people can get in touch with you. I mean, if they have ideas for, you know, continuing, continuing your series, because why not? Right. Let, let's uh, let's explore those ideas. I mean, it's it has it done well the series so far. Been well received. Yeah, they've been doing really good. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, what 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 other things would you like to say to like you know to, to get yourself out there? How do people contact you? Uh, I mean, like in a it, you, what what is your public address? Uh, Startofscience.com, definitely. Very good. Very good. All right, I'm going to let you say whatever you want, whatever else you want to say to, to close this out, and then I'm going to halt it, let you have the last word. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully uh, I get to talk to you again. Just if you need to contact me or anything, just go to startascience.com. Thank you much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot.